that's a challenge. Hi everyone, I'm Eric Ramberg and I'm the CEO of Springworks. And I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, what we have learned connecting cars. So I'm not going to talk about the 15 billion connected devices or the possible future or what I can do as an operator, which I'm not. I'm going to lead you down a bit down the path of how to do when you actually want to connect something or at least a few lessons learned. If it's a machine or a vehicle or anything, we like things that moves. So Springworks, we are specialized in connectivity applications for vehicles. We are a team of senior product managers and developers and has worked together as a team the past nine years. Um, and we are specifically interested in things that moves or vehicles because it's a lot more fun than, than something that's still in the apartment because then you can use Wi-Fi or anything like that. We want it to be on, on the road because then you have batteries and stuff like that to tackle. And our approach into this business is a little bit different from, I think, and many of the others. Because we started with mobile games in 2002. This was way before smartphones, but at that time considered state of the art. So we were really good at, or we became at least really good at designing things on a very small screen, thinking about the user experience. And we, we say that in order for any solution to bring its promised value, it needs to be used. That's probably obvious for everyone. But uh, for instance, I read that in the Apple App Store, of all the apps ever downloaded and installed on a phone, less than 1% has been started more than once. So I wouldn't say they're used. We think there are two ways to make people use solutions. Either you make them enjoyable or you make them valuable. And if you're really good, you do both. Uh, valuable regards uh, you know, business case figures. I need to earn money and become more effective. Enjoyable, you want to have fun. And in the enjoyment sector, there are a few tricks. One is called the 30 second rule. In the gaming industry, we tried to give the user a positive experience, a positive experience every 30 seconds, like a gift or a, a nice sound or anything like that. And in the Seinfeld that you've probably seen, they use the exact same pattern. So every 30 seconds, there's a small laugh or a small jiggle. It doesn't have to be funny. There's just someone laughing, and it feels really good. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I think there's a true risk in our line of business that we will create more annoyance than value. We are going to connect various sorts of things and we're going to put it in the hands of the users and if we are not careful we are going to create a lot of annoyance rather than all the efficiency we heard about this morning. So as a basis for this little lesson learned I'm going to talk about Volvo on call which is an application we've done for Volvo Car Corporation. Uh, we started with Volvo in 2010, and I'm going to show more about what the app is about in a few slides. Um, and it, we were actually part of creating one of the first connected car applications. And it's available on iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, supports all Volvo's different car brands, uh, translated I think, into, I think it's 13 or 14 languages available in all their markets, of course, all that. And the great thing is that it has actually significant, significantly increased the aftermarket sales for Volvo. It's also increased the second-hand value of cars, and they're selling more of their e-call services. And the pleasure for us, of course, is that this has also been internationally, internationally awarded several times. And what does the app do? I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but it, it all started with this. <laughs> I'm not sure why the, the screenshots are in German, but... <laughs> Let's just pretend you're in English or Dutch. Uh, you can request assistance. That's where it all started, the e-call service, roadside assistance. You can lock and unlock your car from remote. Very useful. Uh, and you can, the, the, the killer feature in Scandinavia where I'm from is to start the engine heater from remote or schedule the engine heater so you know that the car is warm and cozy in the morning when you're traveling to work. You also see all the different... Uh, Dashboard values like the distance to empty tank, uh, uh, average speed, etc. This car is the new hybrid car, so you can also see how much power you have left in the battery. Uh, 
you get all the different warnings from the car, so you can make sure everything is green and okay before you go away. And you can also find the car on a map and get walking directions, etc. You can take a quick look whether you forgot to close any of your windows or any of your doors to make sure it's not going to get damaged if it's raining. And on the new hybrid cars, you can also get a detailed trip view, so you can see the amount of battery you consumed at a specific point, or the amount of fuel, and how much is charged the car at a specific point, and so forth. And based on that, I'm trying to present eight quick lessons learned. Good power management and good connectivity. What you need for a connectivity solution to bring a decent added value. This is basics. <laughs> You need connectivity, and I'd say it roughly depends on coverage and power. We would like all cars to look like this, but they are unfortunately not looking like that. That would be a great car. It would have problems with range, but otherwise it would be great to do apps for. So what we're dealing with instead is batteries and SIM cards and antennas. And when you're doing that for a vehicle or anything, I advise you to spend a lot of time on power management, implement different power modes. You can have your unit uh, sleeping, being awake, in pajamas mode. Don't save money on antennas. Make sure you have redundancy solutions. I also talk a lot about going all the way, because we're at the end there's a user going to use this application, and don't stop too early. Uh, use more information to provide less <laughs> use more te technology to provide less information. I try to I'll try to make an example of this. You have a car, it's connected, and it's being unlocked, or it's at the street being unlocked. You can then either present the user with the message, your car is unlocked. Some car manufacturers do this. Then you have one sensor in the car knowing that the car is unlocked. Or if you have a, a better uh, integration with more sensors, you can also say, your car is unlocked. Do you want to lock it, yes or no? And present the user with an uh, idea of at least let him do what he wants. I say go even one step further and do it like that. You forgot to lock your car, it's taken care of. Why even bother the user with the, the, the action of choosing between locking or unlocking? Lesson three, about the car owners. For Volvo being a Swedish brand, of course, the, the heater function was of importance. They knew that, and, and we know that, me and Magnus, who lives there. <laughs> we have cold winters. Uh, so that was very central for them. But I say, if, if connecting anything else, think about what do your users actually want from this product, whether it's a building machine or, or a car. So if I would do an app for this car brand, I would not include an engine heater. In the case of a Ferrari, it's probably more about theft or touch alarms, and of course about improving your driving experience or your driving skills. How did I do when I took that last lap? How, how, how are others driving, etc.? They're not really into engine heaters. Well, actually, I don't know because I don't have a Ferrari, but I'm, I'm guessing. So why connect a car from an owner's perspective? Uh, this is uh, our own list. This is Springworks list, so it's not a lot of research, but at least some. Uh, of course, it's reassurance, knowing that there are no warnings in your car, knowing that you, you locked all the doors, knowing that there are no windows open, etc. But also a surprise for us is that bragging rights qualifies quite high up on the list. Uh, we, we sit on data from three years of, act of actual users driving around in Europe, and we implemented a function called honk and blink. And the use case was that you are parking on a big parking lot outside a shopping mall and the GPS positioning is not accurate enough. So you can't really find your car. Then we thought it should be really convenient to press honk and blink and the car honk and blinks for five seconds and you immediately find it. But we found out by looking at the data that the feature honk and blink is used Friday evenings or Saturday evenings in wealthy suburbs. So it's probably the Volvo call owners having friends over for dinner and showing off, like, look what I can do with my car. Because that's like one of the only features that can make it sound. So don't underestimate that. And of course, it's about making everyday life more convenient. Lesson four, guesswork. If you put a telematic unit inside a car, uh, 
or anything else, it's going to report data. So in this case, it reports 0.8 G from the accelerometer. But does that mean that it was a hard break or was that a crash? Well, I don't know, but we need to find out. So when doing this, implement feedback loops and make sure that you can remotely update the software you're putting, putting there. Set some initial threshold values, fine tune when the system is live, and also be aware that you will always be guessing at some point. Try to be as good as possible, but you will be guessing in the end. Deep integration. Again, I'm not from BCHEM research. <laughs> we don't spend time on analysis, but this is our view. When we compare uh, factory installed solutions with post installed aftermarket solutions. And we, we can see that they, they, they kept pace from 2004, I think they started to 2009, when it was merely a concierge service. And then in the case of Volvo, they added an SMS service so you could start the engine heater. And we can see that it took off. And then in 2011, when we added the apps, it really took off. And there is a big difference with the post-installed solutions and the factory installed, and I'll try to explain why. It's only a low cost when you purchase the car. You're going to spend a lot of money anyway, so why not add this extra feature? Compared to I have a five-year-old car, should I really buy this extra feature? And as you can see to the right, <laughs> that's a picture of my car with a post-installed solution, and this is the Volvo Call solution. Factory installed looks better, <laughs> period. And factory installed is actually cheaper, and factory installed in, is less hassle to handle. Uh, and it also gives access to more sensors that I tried to say earlier. With more sensors, you can get more data, you can combine the sensor and make better services. The sixth lesson is about hiding latency. This is our, the Springworks view on how a solution like this should look like, at least for connecting a car or, or a vehicle or a truck, you could put anything at the end. Uh, and we have this solution in place, if someone's interested, by the way. Uh, but as you can see, there's lots of servers. There are the, the connectivity providers and their servers, etc. So there will be latency. And there's not that much that I can do about that. But we know that from Google, that they claim half a second delayed cause a 20% drop in traffic and half a second delayed kill the user satisfaction. And this was in 2008 and I think it's actually even worse now. So even though you have the latency, and this comes from the gaming experience, try to hide it as much as you can. And there's one, one little way of doing that. And that's called uh, progressive loading or lazy loading. Uh, my, my developers are fighting about the correct term, so I, I brought them both. And, and the difference here is that instead of asking something and waiting until you retrieve all the data, you ask several questions and you present it while you have the data. And I'll try to, to show you. I'm not sure if you noticed the difference, but there is a difference. And since I have two very small kids that watch Teletubbies all the days, I'm going to show this twice. From, and from a user perspective, when we do user uh, uh, focus groups and user testing, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a major difference. And of course, the apps looks better than that, but all these small tweaks will actually make a difference in the end. Lesson seven, avoid the round trip. When connecting things, cars or anything else, uh, there are times when you want to go all the way down, as we say, all the way down to the car and then all the way back. But if you can avoid it, do it. Uh, the correct way of doing it is doing it like that. Have your vehicle upload the latest and greatest to the cloud when it can, when it has connection, uh, and when everything is, <laughs> is nice. Uh, because there's not that many use cases where you need to have like second fresh data. You're often okay with two or three minutes old data. Because this improves user experience a lot when you can go directly to the cloud instead of all the way to the car. And then my final lesson. Uh, what we've seen when we talk about uh, M2M or Internet of Things with our clients, there's a huge difference of showing PowerPoints or showing real data and connecting something. So my advice is 
convinced by Connect. We saw the difference when I worked with Volvo now for three years, when we talked about this and when we, we, we designed use cases and when we did things. And now when they have done this and they can start making their own conclusions and all of a sudden the whole company is interested. It's not just an R&D fun thing. Now they can actually make business out of this. So I have a special IoT Eindhoven offer for you. Seeing is believing. And for you or any of your clients, I promise that Springworks will help you connect 10 things, machines, vehicles, or anything, for free. So you should be lucky you're in this room and not any of the others. Again, Teletubby style, repetition. My humble advice for a promising business, make sure you have good connectivity and good power management. Go all the way. Always think, can we go one step more to make life easier for the user? <coughs> Understand your customers and know your customers. Guesswork, make sure you can change parameters after your live. Integrate as deeply as you can and put in a, a few extra sensors. They are quite cheap. You never know when they can come in handy. Try to hide latency. Avoid round, round trip. Save it to the cloud. And convince by connect. Start connecting things and then you'll get your business. First come, first serve. I'll be here. Thank you. Great.